Hey guys, so today I'm going to be making Bulls and Cows, which we don't know what Bulls and Cows is. It's basically a game where you have to guess an isogram. And an isogram is a word with no repeating letters. So, for example, I'll run this. This is what it's going to look like at the end. So, it'll be a random word. doesn't matter what length it is, you know. So then you, you'll enter a seven letter word. So, monkeys. So, if it's the letters in the right position of the correct word, it'll tell you it's a bull. If it's not, it's a cow. So, then, um, boom. This was the correct word. Alright, so, it's a old-fashioned game. Usually, paper and pencil, if you look it up, it's uh, on Google. There's a Wikipedia page and all that. If you want to look into the game, but we'll start. So I just like to import all my stuff easily in the line. <clears throat> so Not much to talk about with this. There's just <laughs> um, I'll put that. We'll make like one method, so I'll put that one up there later. And so we'll just start with the variables and stuff now. So I'm gonna give the player a certain amount of shots to guess. You can remove this functionality. You can make it a bigger number. You do what you will. I'm gonna set it at eight. And then I'm going to create the scanner so they can obviously I can do all that stuff. But I'm just going to use the output console. So. That's not what I wanted. <laughs> okay. So I made my scanner. Made the amount of chances they have. Now I want to make the list of isograms. So I'm going to make it a status of string. So we'll call it isograms. Is new links list. So we'll just add to it right here. It's kind of like isograms. Add. Ironically, isogram is an isogram, so you can do that. Isograms. Add. Um, we did monkey. Uh, isograms. Add. Uh, table. Oops. So I'm just gonna add three because I don't care. Um, so obviously we're gonna need to have their player guess as well. So I'll just do it up here just to make it all organized. Player guess. Initialize it. All right. So this is also gonna be similar to my other math random formulas I've used in the past. So. We're gonna generate the answer from the oh boy. We're gonna generate the answer from the list, the link list. So um I'm gonna start off just create this basic variable. So math.random automatically generates a number between zero and one, so casting the int is going to make it a whole number instead of a decimal. Now the reason I have this PEMDAS situation going on over here is because the indexes you have do start at zero and the length will always be one more. So I'm going to have to do minus one so I don't get an index that doesn't exist. So I'm going to create string isogram equals isograms dot get x so isogram is going to be the word that they don't know that they need to guess i'm going to do this like a one round program so if you guys want to loop that out you guys can loop that i'm just going to do a basic loop that while it's 
while you have the chances left. So while chances are greater than zero, the game will keep running. So at this point, we should print to them so they know what's going on. I mean, you could have done a welcome message up there, I guess, but like uh, system.l.println. Welcome to bulls and cows. And then when we go over here, I'm going to say enter a. Now, you don't know what word you're going to get, unless you're pick them all that are the same length, but that's kind of weird. Not necessary. Enter a number with length uh, wait. I feel like that's weird English. <laughs> letter word. Enter a seven letter word. Yeah, yeah, okay. So enter a seven letter word, right? So I'm actually going to program it to check if they don't listen. So if they like actually you ask them to do five and they do less or more, then you'd be like, well, it's not that many letters. <laughs> you didn't listen. So we got to set the player guest equal s dot next line because we want them to type a bunch of characters. So we're going to do an if statement followed by an else statement because if they did it correct or they did not. And that's when we'll actually have a follow if. Which is, this is called a, a nested if statement, just for fun. Yeah. And so, so if the player guess dot length, oh, Christ. length does not equal isogram dot length, obviously they did not listen to this line of code. So we're gonna yell at them. I wouldn't be too mean, don't be too harsh. But you can tell them well, the word is <laughs> emphasis with my two exclamation points. So then you want it to kind of loop back forward because you want it to go back up because they didn't listen so there's nothing to go forward so continue will bring it back up to the top of the loop now we're gonna go in the else statement we have the if statement because i'm gonna check for a boolean here so i'm gonna check their guess actually i'm gonna check their guess Exclamation point means not in programming, if you're unaware. Now, I want to pass in the isogram and the player guess. And this is if they're wrong, which is why I put the not with the exclamation point. So if they're not correct, then obviously they should lose a chance. Um, so now I'm going to program that. So public static boolean check guess. So we're gonna say string isogram, and we're gonna do string player guess. And then I'm gonna create a boolean. Oh, I forgot my b in public. I was wondering why it was still red. Um, boolean, let's say wrong, I don't know, so equals false, so far they're not wrong until they're proven to be wrong, make sense? Hope so. So, obviously, since it's a word with a bunch of different characters, we're going to have to create some sort of iteration, so I'm going to do a basic for loop, nothing complicated, very, very basic. So, iso oh, did I spell isogram with two O's? That's weird. Alright, isogram dot length. Um, I'm gonna this. So, because it's less than, you can do the length. If, it, if you did less than the equal, then you'd have to do minus one to make up for it, just to make sense with the coincide what I was doing before, if you're 
confused. So, for loop, we're going to do if else. And the if's going to be a little, a little long, a little annoying because you got to make sure all the conversions are good. Because you can't convert chars with strings. So, string.value of is going to convert it to a string. So, string.value of isogram.charat. So, we're going to check if that, I did not want to comment, if that equals string.value of player guess dot charat. Alright. Makes sense. Everyone's together. <laughs> Alright, so down here, we're going to return wrong anyway, just for the record. So here, since it's already set to false, we don't need to set it to false again. Because we already established it. We don't really need to tell it when it's going to be true. So we're going to do print lines on both of them. And this is going to say it's true. And system.out.println. So at this point, we're going to print out the letter and tell them whether it was bull or cow. So bull is if they matched it up correctly, and a cow is if they didn't. So I'll just print out that player guess dot char at i is a bull. And then same thing here. as a cow. And that is the whole function. So I'm going to close it, scroll down, so here we are. Now we're almost done. We just have to check if they're correct with the whole word to see if they won. So matching up with this guy. So right here, yes. We're going to check if they got the word correct. So, if they're, if, if we, um, just say if player gets I mean, you can write this a bunch of different ways, honestly. I'm just, this is the way I'm going to write it right here. So, if player gets dot equals isogram obviously you got it correct so system I don't have print line I good job or whatever you want to do and then you can just break out because I did like a one round this is like the base of the program then this is after the while loop because that the two brackets are for the two classes that you need initialize for any Java class. So obviously this is the while loop ending. Um, you can detect if they ran out of chances, the loop's going to automatically break because of the statement. So therefore, I'm writing it like this. Because if they lose, it'll just say nothing. And they'll be like, oh, well, why did the game just close? But if you say, hey, if their chances are less than zero when we break out of a loop, that's probably because they lost. So you tell them you ran out of chances. Better luck next time. I mean, you could always uh, be printing out their chances so they know how many they have each round. That would be cool too. But you can do whatever. And then, um, you always do like the simple exit messages. System out of the print line. Thanks for playing. Oh. And then, uh, closing the scanner is nice. But yeah, so this is basically a fun word game, easy to program, not too crazy. And again, if you guys have recommendations for videos or questions that I can actually answer with videos, 
by all means, post them in the comments below. Have fun.